I sometimes wonder about worlds that could have been. If you think back to some old slang from the 80s where people might say stuff like tubular. Why not angular? What could have been? Anyway, let's learn about angular momentum. We're going to start by covering some work and power for rotational motion and then using that to analyze rolling motion. After which, we'll get into angular momentum and its conservation. Work and power. If we have a body here at position A, and then it moves to position B during some time period, we can describe this motion with this displacement S, which is equal to theta cross R. This is from our knowledge of rotational motion. This is one of those relationships. That little bit amount of displacement ds then is equal to d theta cross r. And we can use the product rule to expand that out to d theta cross r plus dr cross theta. We'll note that for a rigid body, dr is zero. So this is for rigid body. We'll write out the whole body. And that's because as long as your body is not squishing or stretching, the distance that you are away from the axis of rotation is not going to change. We can then say that the work done as we move from one position to another is equal to what it was before. It's equal to f dot dr, or the integral of f dot dr, where we consider whatever forces are acting on our object as this happens. We can then replace this f dot ds. So I said dr. It's moving ds, so it's dotted with the direction we're moving in. And we can replace that with our d theta cross r. Then we get some fancy identity stuff using the fact that a dotted with the quantity b cross c is equal to b dotted with the quantity c cross a. We can rewrite this, and if you don't believe this, you can try writing it out and proving to yourself that this actually does work. I'm just going to use it to be able to rewrite my f dot d theta cross r as d theta cr dot r cross f. Now we're getting places. This r cross f is torque. That gives us our net torque, or our sums of our torque acting on our body. Now that lets us rewrite our work as the integral of the sums of our torque dotted with our position. And you might be like, wait, position was on the left. Yeah, but it's okay because dot product is commutative. It can switch around. So the cross product can't, and that's why this is kind of a tricky thing. Again, verify that that works. But this dot product, it's fine if you swap the sides there. Then we get the total work is equal to our sum of our torques dotted with uh, d theta integrated over that movement. So our total work on our rigid body is the sum of the torques integrated over the angle through which the body rotates. Lovely. If you have a constant torque, then you can just take that sums of the torques out front and you just get torque times delta theta. We can now write a work energy theorem for rotation that says that the difference in kinetic energies is equal to the work done on an object. This is the work energy theorem from before. Work from A to B is equal to my final kinetic energy at B minus my initial kinetic energy at A. Our kinetic energy for rotation now is one half I omega squared. And our work for rotation that we just found is that integral of our sums of our torques over that angle that we go through. And just remind us that this is net torque. For constant torque then, this can come out front and exactly what I just said, the work done to go from position A to position B is equal to the torque times the displacement in angular displacement. All right, so we have work for rotational motion, and we have the work energy theorem for rotational motion. 
And now if we want to use this to solve problems, we can start by identifying forces on our body and drawing a free body diagram as we generally do, finding torques as needed, and then we can calculate the work done during our body's rotation by each torque that might be acting and apply the work energy theorem to equate that network done on the body to our change in rotational kinetic energy of the body. And hopefully that gives us some useful descriptive equations that can let us solve for whatever it is we're interested in solving for.